Dear students, until now we have discussed enough about operating system, its components and functions. And from today we will be starting two modules. One would be focusing on security threats and security attacks that can arise from outside of the operating system. And the second module will be focusing on security attacks within the operating system. So today's module will focus on security attacks from outside. So why we need to make secure the operating system and its functioning? As you know that we have defined operating system as overall in charge of the computer system. So whoever is the overall in charge should be secure enough so that it can accommodate other applications in a secure way. So its role is maintaining security is important and designing of dependable operating system is very important. Dependable operating system means to which you can depend reliably. So there are different kind of security issues. For example, one of the issues, one of the kind of the issues are known as reliability. For example, if there is a flaw in the file manager that could loss in the part of the file. So your file manager is corrupt or having some issues. So such kind of issues are treated as reliability issues. And then there could be another type of issues like system crash, which is a defect in the dispatcher. You know, the dispatcher allows particular slots to the processes. And if some process takes a little bit more slot by some means, by manipulating some means with the operating system, so such kind of issues will be treated under system crash. And the development of secure operating system is not basically the main subject that is studied under the operating system umbrella. That is another subject known as software engineering, which is focused to develop secure operating systems or secure softwares, which we will be discussing in some other modules. So one of the way to stop uh, the security attacks is to stop unauthorized persons to access your computer or your laptop, your operating system. So one way would be that you can create accounts. So every user is given a username, a password and a privilege. So for example, a user has been given a username and password. So without that username and password, user cannot enter into the system. So this is one of the way to make sure that your system is, author is somehow secure. Although there are different ways that someone can even access your system, even it has username or passwords, which we will be studying afterwards. And then you can set the privileges. For example, a normal user cannot perform advanced tasks in the operating system. And similarly, some normal user cannot, for example, have access to a particular drive or to a particular folder. So you can set such privileges depending upon the users. So for example, if there are two types of user, one is a student, another is the faculty. So both are accessing the same system. So the user of which have a type of student cannot access the privileges and the data and the folders which belong to the faculty. So such kind of privileges can be set by the administrator. So there would be some login procedure and it would be set by super user called administrator. And then there could be some auditing softwares. So who are auditing your system? For example, administrator can monitor activities. Malicious are accidental things and then record and analyze the activities. So for example, you can analyze that on this kind of system, a user signs in, for example, at 9 a.m. 
and then it signs out permanently at 5 pm. But on the same system, some user comes after 5 pm and try to achieve some task. So this means that it is a different behavior or it is a different activity which is normally not done by that particular kind of user. So, for example, there could be another example like flood of attempts to log in using incorrect password. So someone has accessed the username and then that user is giving so many attempts of trying multiple kind of passwords. So we will also say that do not use very generic passwords to your accounts. So for example, students normally uh, choose password like 12345. So such a password can be cracked by anyone. So this could be one of the way. And then there could be another thing which is known as impossible travel. So for example, if user is logged in in Lahore at 5 p.m. and after half an hour, the same user is logged in from America. So this is not possible that someone can go from Lahore to USA within half hours. So such kind of activities can be monitored. And then violating past behavior and presence of sniffing softwares. What are those sniffing softwares? That records user activities and report them to intruder. So for example, uh, there is a very well-known example of fake simulation of login procedure for operating system. So when you are going to log in, you are given a screen that is similar to the normal operating system screen, but that is not an operating system. That is an application hosted by some fake user and you are going to enter your username and password into that application and that application is saving the information and sending this information to the originator of that or the owner of that application. So when we analyze the major reasons for computer security, we have identified that there is a carelessness of users. They choose passwords very carelessly. And then selection of user names and passwords, sharing of passwords with your friends and fail to change password on time. So time to time we should change our passwords and then import unimproved software into your system, which then becomes as a sniffing software, which, which can act as a sniffing software afterwards. So if we summarize today's module, we have learned about security attacks that can arise from outside and we have learned about reliability and system crash and what are the ways to solve such attacks like login and what are the implications and importance of auditing software, sniffing softwares and why the computer fails into certain situations.